Let's talk about the EV-1, the computerized buttonholer exclusive for the Juki TL sewing machines. Hey guys, it's David from Gigi's Fabric Shop, home to Juki and Janome Junkies. And in today's video, we're gonna be unboxing the EV-1 buttonholer, showing you what's inside the box and all of the amazing features that come with this unit, along with setting it up on the machine so you'll know how to set it up on your machine. Let's start off with what is compatible with the computerized EB-1 buttonholer unit. It was specifically designed just for the Juki TL semi-industrial sewing machine. The only TL it doesn't work with is the 2200 long arm, which is a much bigger TL. It's an older version of their long arm, and that's the only unit we'll not work with. We'll work with all of the other TLs. So if you have a 2000, 2010, 18, 15, collector's edition, 2020, all of those TL models, it works with your TL. So now let's go ahead and get ready to unbox this unit. Just keep in mind, it does not work with anything else other than the TL semi-industrial sewing machines. So let's go ahead and open up this box. The first thing you're gonna notice is the box they ship it in is very nice, and you're gonna to wanna to keep the box because it's actually nice to house the unit when you're not using it to keep it nice and safe. First thing we have here is your serial number and your warranty registration card. The next thing we have here is just a little caution paper, just telling you all of the little cautions to be aware of, not dropping oil on the computerized function and all those fun things. So we'll go ahead and put that to the side. The next thing that's gonna come out of the box is gonna be your user manual. This user manual is actually pretty fantastic. There is everything you'll need to know about how to use this EB-1 buttonholer in this user manual. And I can tell you that from firsthand learning. I actually went through this and practiced using this buttonholer and it was really, really easy with step-by-steps on how to use it. So there's nothing to worry about. If you don't learn everything in our videos, you'll be able to learn everything in the user manual. That is for sure. So that is going to be real nice and handy and I like how they provide you with a thick user manual copy and it's not just something that's a digital. So that's nice that it's physical. Uh, the next thing here is going to be a adjustable pin replacement. This is going to be um, for replacing a part on the EB-1 buttonholer if it were to break. So they're already giving you replacement parts if there's anything that is something that could come off. Um, this is just a nice little sticker telling you all of the steps that you want to do before you actually use the EB-1 unit. So before you actually use the unit, you're going to want to make sure your press foot pressure is at the middle. You're going to want to make sure your speed control is all the way up. If you have a TL-2000, you don't have this, so you don't actually have to do that because your speed control is always all the way up. Then you want to drop your feed dogs down, and then you also want to make sure your press foot is actually down and not up. So that's a nice little sticker. You can choose to stick that onto the unit yourself, or you can put it um, anywhere you'd like it. This is another little warranty registration paper. Then we have our little accessory bag. So we have a seam ripper, we have the mounting screw, then we have this little rubber cap, which actually helps us mount the mounting screw onto the unit. But then we have these little sticky um, clips, and this is what you use to clip in the cord if you wanna you do some wire management. Uh, we have this little felt pad. This is for the unit to uh, allow it to not kind of put metal on metal, so it's just like a little felt pad. Then we have this little spacer. This little spacer is if you have uh, maybe a pair of jeans and you put that seam into the unit and it's you know uneven, this is kind of just like a little spacer to help even out that project so that way the clear presser foot uh, that you put down onto the material will be nice and even on the surface. I'll kind of throw an example up uh, up in the corner so you can see what I'm talking about there. Then of course we have our power cord with our power uh, supply that goes to the unit to power it. And now that we have all that out of the way, we can actually take out, of the, take out this box here and we can take our whole entire EB-1 unit out of the box. You're gonna remove this back and then you're gonna grab the arm and the unit all in one, just like that. And you're just gonna put that box down to the side. Once you have that unit out, you're gonna go ahead and remove this little plastic cover which is going to expose your presser foot. This is a smart presser foot. You can see there's a cord that goes to it and this is what speaks to the unit, telling it all of the controls that are going on with the machine um, itself. So if your presser foot's down, the speed and all that kind of stuff, this is what talks back to this unit. So you're just gonna unbox this computerized unit here. We have just these little silicone beads 
This is to keep make sure the moisture is out when shipping. Now that we have all of this out of the boxing, we can go ahead and mount this onto the machine. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use your hand to move this out. And then there's this little cardboard piece here. Then there's also going to be a few little blue pieces of tape on different components. You can just remove that. That's just to hold it for shipping. You're going to want to move this hoop so that way you can see this little L shape. This is where you're going to be putting your projects and where the buttonholes designs will be, you know, stitching out. You're going to want to expose this little hole right here. This is where you would mount it to the machine bed. So you can just move this unit with your hand. So you're going to want to move it in and kind of just flush with the front right there and that'll expose that. So now we can actually put it onto the machine bed. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna remove our standard presser foot that we're using. And all you're gonna do is literally just move this into the throat of the machine area. And you'll see that there's this little tiny plastic peg that comes off the bottom of the EB1 unit. And that's the little plastic peg that I was mentioning earlier that comes as a extra part. So if that were to ever break on you, you do have a backup there. So what you're going to do is that is going to line up with this one little hole in the throat space. It's actually the spot where you would drop a drop of oil in. And then the other little spot, this little hole right here, is actually going to mount or line up with the hole closest to the needle on the mounting plate that you would put your T-gauge on. So what you're going to do is you're just going to push this into this area and it'll actually kind of just fall into place. You can see how it fell into place and now it's not going to move. So now that you have it all in place, you should see that the threads are poking right through this little hole right in the middle of the frame of the EB1. You're going to grab this little flathead screw. You're going to put this little rubber cap on top of it just nice and evenly. And that kind of gives you a little bit extra grip to start it out. You're just going to reach in here and start threading that into that area. Once you get it threaded all the way down to where it's snug, then you're going to grab your T-gauge or a small flathead screwdriver, which in today's video, I actually have a, a small little flathead. We'll put a link in the description for this one. We also have the T-gauges, which work great, but this actually works fantastic for this one. And you're just gonna go ahead and tighten that down. Once it's tightened down all the way, that's pretty much all you have to do to mount the EB-1 to your machine. So it takes only a few seconds to mount this thing up. And then all you have to do is just plug it all in. So let's show you how to plug it in. Okay, so now that we have this mounted up, we have our small little flathead screw tighten down into that little mounting plate area. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's nice and flush with that metal plate. So you should be able to run your finger across it and you shouldn't really feel much because it's kind of just sitting down and recessed into that metal plate. Once that's tightened down and you have that peg into that hole, you should notice that this unit does not wanna really move. It might be able to pick it, you might be able to pick it up a little bit on each side, but pushing it back and forth, you should not feel it moving back and forth. So now that we know it's good, you can also just do one little visual check, making sure that the needle is not gonna strike anything. You can put the needle down like that. Okay, we're good. Now we're just gonna go ahead and grab our power adapter. We're gonna go ahead and plug in our power cord to the power adapter. And we're just gonna plug this into the wall. Once we get this plugged into our outlet, we'll have this cord that comes off of this. And this will plug into the back of the unit of the EB-1. So once you have that plugged in, you're good to go. And now there is another plug that comes off the back of the EB-1 that'll actually plug into where your foot pedal typically goes on the TL. And once that's all powered up, now we can go ahead and put our foot on. And you could actually put the foot on before you did all that. Uh, that way there's no power on. So actually mine's not even turned on yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot on and putting the foot on is pretty simple. You're just going to loosen that little side screw. You're gonna wanna make sure the needle's pretty much in the down position. So when you put it on, you actually kind of put the needle through the um, foot and then you're gonna go ahead and tighten this down because you want the needle to be below that foot. So that way when you lift up, your foot should come up like that. And that's what's telling your machine how fast it's going and all of those features. You actually have the option and it does come with some little uh, stickies that you can stick onto the back of this machine. And then this cord can have some wire management. You can kind of stick it to the machine so it's nice and tucked away. But personally, rather than sticking more things on there, I'm just gonna put the cord right around that little bobbin winder and that'll keep my wire plenty far enough out of the way to be any issue for me. So it's totally up to you if you wanna put those little stickies on your machine, but personally, I'd rather just keep them off. When you're using this machine, you're gonna to wanna to wind your bobbin just like you would typically wind your bobbin, except you can't wind it until you unplug the little cord that would go in the foot pedal spot. So that is what speaks to the EB-1. You just unplug that whenever you're ready to wind a bobbin and you can wind a bobbin like normal. Then whenever you're ready, you plug it back in, you're good to go. This is really special and unique because it's really the first of its kind to be like its own little unit that actually attaches to a machine. 
and it's a computerized button holder and it can go from a five millimeter button, a very small button that you could use for making little doll dresses or uh, sorts of things like that, which are really, really nice because it does a fantastic buttonhole stitch at that small. What they did here was they actually put on this little graph here or this little measuring chart and you can actually drop a button into this area here and it'll tell you how big of a buttonhole you need to use for that button that you're using. So that's really nice and convenient. You have your own little measuring tape right here. You just drop your button in there and it'll tell you what size you need to set your buttonholes. But what's really special is you get all of the capabilities of this super strong semi-industrial straight stitch sewing machine. So we all know that the TL can sew from very fine dress materials all the way up to pliable leathers and thick denims and all those kinds of heavier weight materials. So now you're able to bring a machine that can do bar tacks and buttonholes into the realm of thicker materials. You can also use heavier weight threads. So you can really create some really strong buttonholes for maybe your son's specialty jeans that you built um, with you know, Tex 45 thread or Tex 70. Maybe you wanna make a bar tack and you wanna reinforce a certain project. You can use this machine with a Tex 45 or a Tex 70 thread. So it really brings up your game to what you can do with your buttonholes your bar tacks or your eyelets. You wanna have a very professional, clean, consistent buttonhole, and you also wanna have a very customized stitch. This is the unit for you. So let's actually power this sucker on and kinda of just go over the different features that you can change on this unit that makes it super, super special and unique to the industry. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and thread our machine and make sure everything's ready to go. So it's just normal threading. Make sure your bobbin case is in, normal threading again. If this embroidery hoop is over and you go to open this, you'll see it, it will lift up on that. You don't want that. So you can just push this unit over while it's off and you can go ahead and access your normal door and put your bobbin case in there. So as far as tension goes, it talks about tension in the user manual, uh, but it's pretty much the same as your tension should be when you're using that thread that you're gonna be sewing with. The only adjustment that I recommend is loosening your top tension a little bit more than usual. So do about a one, one number off of what it was when you were sewing normally. Um, so one full rotation on your main tension knob here, and that's really all you need to do. So now that you have it all ready to go, you're just gonna go ahead and thread your machine just like you normally would. So I'm just gonna go ahead and snip this thread right there. Got my bobbin case in. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my machine, turn it on, and then I'm gonna turn on the EB1 unit, which is on the side here. You'll see it'll show the logo. Now that it's popping up this screen, it's saying you're good to go. Press enter. It's gonna move the unit, cut the thread, and kind of get the unit in position to start sewing a buttonhole. So once it's in position, just like so, you now can put your material underneath into the uh, frame, and you can just place it underneath here and you can close your clamp. So this clamp opens 7.5 millimeters up, so you could actually put up to 7.5 uh, millimeters of material in there, uh, which is quite a bit of material, and then you can just close that clamp down. So if for some reason you're sewing, and let's say you're using a material that's like this, so we've got a thick seam over here and then it's flat over here. So you put this in here like so, and you go to put this hoop down, and you can see that there's a gap there, that's when you're going to be using this little spacer plate, which is literally just a piece of cardboard. And you can put that in here to help give this presser foot pretty much pressure. So that way you're going to get a even buttonhole. Um, so you just put a piece of cardboard or some sort of material. You could use even your own piece of cardboard to kind of put it in here and make sure that this uh, evenly distributing uh, presser foot pressure onto your material. So that way you can get a consistent buttonhole. So that is what that's for. Um, and then also you have this non-slip piece of material in here, and that's actually what that's for as well, is if you're using like a very slick, um, fine chiffon dress material, you would place this here like so, and then you would make your EB1 buttonhole in this area here, and that would help prevent from your material sliding and slip, slipping. So that's really nice. We're just using two layers of cotton with a little bit of stabilizer. Remember, it's important when doing buttonholes to have a stabilizer in your material. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this uh, unit down onto my material here. And now I can select what I want to do for my buttonhole. So 
I would just put my button right here and you can see that it'll just rest here and you can measure your button. And once you do that, you can just press settings and let's go ahead and select, actually, let's select our button hole that we're gonna use. So we can go through one through 14 different selections here and you can see all of the different um, patterns and styles of buttonholes. And then you can see your bar tack and then your eyelet stitches here. So we're just gonna do a standard square button and we're just gonna press enter. Once you press enter, now you can go to settings and you can adjust all the settings for that one button design. So as you can see here, I could press enter again. I can select the size button I'm gonna be using. So let's just say we're gonna be using a 15 millimeter button, press enter. Then the next thing here is going to be, uh, let's see, this is gonna be your density. So this will tell you how dense your stitches are gonna be. I'm gonna be using a Tex 45, so I'm gonna try like a six millimeter density here. We can go ahead and press enter. Now we're gonna go ahead and select this. This is gonna be the width of your stitch. So we're just gonna keep our stitch width at 0.5.5. Then we're gonna select how wide we want our slit to be. So if we want it to be small for a small narrow button, a medium sized button or a super thick button, let's go with, uh, let's go with a really thick button because that'll be interesting to see. And now we can actually select what different side we want our button to be placed onto our material. So you have four different settings. You can go from zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 and 270. So let's go ahead and make it at just, let's do a 90 degree. So now you're gonna see the hoop will actually make an adjustment to whatever degree we have set there, which actually it looks like it's already set up at 90. And then the next setting we have here is our amount of times it's gonna sew out that pattern. So you can make it do that buttonhole two times or one time. We're just gonna go ahead and do one time since we're using a heavier weight thread. And then this will be how many times it's gonna sew out the initial outline. So if you wanted to have a buttonhole that has a little rise in the middle, you can make it do this two times. You can make it do it zero or just one time. Let's do one. And then the next thing is gonna be speed, how fast we want it to move. Let's go ahead and do turtle so we can see it moving. And then this will be our contrast on our stitch or on our, um, our screen. So it just changes the contrast with the screen. Uh, we're just gonna leave it at where it was because that was totally fine. So now that we have all of our settings selected, we've gone through all of these different settings. And this is what makes this unit so cool because it's so customizable in so many different ways. You can adjust pretty much everything with this buttonhole. And the fantastic thing is it's so consistent. You'll see just how consistent it is. Once we're done with that setting, we're gonna press setting again. We're now in our ready to go screen. So it's showing us where the, what the buttonhole is, uh, what it's gonna look like, and just some of the basic functions we have set up. Now we can go ahead and press start and it's gonna prompt us to go ahead and press start again and it's gonna start sewing. So we've selected where we wanted it to be. We have everything ready to go and now it's starting to sew out the buttonhole. And so that's the outline that you can select it to do two times or one time. We selected it to do one time. If we wanted our buttonhole to be a little bit rised in the middle we could select it to do two or three times, so that way that outline is kind of lifting up in the middle of the design. And remember on slow setting here, so it goes about twice the speed of this, maybe a little faster. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and let it go slow so we can kind of see what it looks like. And it's gonna cut your thread automatically on its own, and then now you can just lift down or push down on this and lift your buttonhole out of the uh, hoop, and it's all done and ready to go. Now I'll grab my scissors and just clean up those little hang nail or hang, hang nails, hang threads. And you can see just how perfect that buttonhole is. And I can make adjustments to make this more dense. I can change just about everything on this. And the user manual does a fantastic job at explaining how to use this more in depth, how to change your settings and tensions. But just like that, you can see it looks pretty dang fantastic. And this was a Tex 45 thread. So it's a pretty heavy duty thread this will be a buttonhole that'll last forever. Very strong. Now let's go ahead and put this back in here and just do one more sew out, but I wanna show you it sewing in the 90 degree um, area. So I'm just gonna go back to settings here. I'm gonna flip it back to actually zero degrees. Enter, zero degrees. And now I'm gonna press settings again to go back to the ready to go mode. Oh. And now it's moving over to zero degrees, which is gonna be right here in this area. And it's always a good idea before you actually start sewing on projects 
get comfortable with the sample piece, sew out some examples, get used to the product before you start actually using this on your shirts or your clothes or whatever you're putting buttholes in. So while this is sewing, I also want to talk about some of the different applications you can use the buttonhole unit on. So since you can go up to a 32 millimeter buttonhole, you could actually put this on curtains and put a rope through the slit of the buttonhole and have a reinforced hole for a rope to go through to hang your curtains. You could use it for more than just buttons. You could put eyelets and hats. You could use it for bar tacking, um, for reinforcing uh, belt loops on the jeans. You can do all, all different sorts of projects with this EV-1 buttonholer unit. And it is super cool because it's now turning your mechanical straight stitch machine into something that is computerized and super fancy. So as you can see, once again, we're gonna go ahead and snip our little tails here snip our tail on the front and look how consistent that buttonhole is compared to this one and how many times we can just duplicate that and have a very professional outcome on our projects. So now that we've gone over the EV-1 unit and how to use it and all of the features that you can use and utilize from this unit to improve your sewing on the Juki TL, let's talk about what you're gonna do when you're done with it. So once you're done with it, you're literally just gonna reverse the process of setting it up and you can either store it back in the box or you can store it in a safe location with everything put together so you don't lose it. I highly suggest, since the box is super nice, to just package it back up in that box, put it back in the corner of your closet, and next time you need it, you can take it out of the box and it's nice and safe. But just like that, that's all you have to do to set up this EB1 unit on the Juki TL. If you're interested in purchasing this unit, don't forget to click in the description of this video. We'll have a link to jukijunkies.com where we'll ship it out extremely fast. Also, if you're local to the Tampa Bay, Brandon area, Swing by Gigi's Fabric Shop, that's our local shop, and you can shop all of the fabrics and all of the Juki products in person. So I'd be happy to meet you. Stop on in if you're swinging by the Brandon, Florida area. Don't forget to give us a like, comment down below what you're excited to use this EB1 unit for on your Juki TL sewing machine or any questions you might have on it in general. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we post every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So just like that, I hope you enjoyed this video and you have a great Sunday afternoon and we'll see you next Sunday. See you later.